It's a privilege to be standing here today to welcome you on this auspicious date, 150th birthday of Hilaire Belloc. I have to say, however, that the weather is disappointing. And when it started to get sunny, even sunny earlier on, I went into my daughter's room and I said, well, this won't do, this won't do at all. What I mean is there should be, well, there are some dark clouds overhead, but there should be, properly speaking, a brewing storm. And above all, there should be bellowing Belokian crashes of thunder. <laughs> For so, we are told, was the birth of Hilaire Belloc announced with ominous thunderclap, born in the middle of a storm. That is how legend has it, as fitting for one who lived through tumultuous times and contributed himself in no small part to some of the clashes and controversies of the age and never shied away from loudly expressing his not always popular opinions. So where's the thunder? <laughs> I'm Charlie Eustace. Um, my mother was a Miss Belloc, so that explains the connection. Her grandfather was Hilaire. I came here as a boy and every room had a candle and a bottle of water and a crucifix in case you should need a prayer in the middle of the night. But there was no electricity, that was 1963. And then I came here in 1970 and we went to the party in the tent here on what was called the paddock where people who remembered Belloc were there, people who were looking after the royalties were there. It was his hundredth birthday. I never thought that eight years later I would come to look after the house when my aunt, Aunt Eleanor, who was herself referred to in the family as a bit of a caution. She was quite a character, a lot of amusing stories. She was very good with children. Um, needed uh, looking after and went to stay with another aunt over in Newbury and, and I came here and I've been here ever since in one form or another. But I'm really here to unveil this and there's a funny story about unveiling that Johnny Morton was asked to unveil the, the plaque on the mill to Hilaire Belloc at the time and it snagged so I hope this one doesn't. <laughs> But he said, as he knew Belloc, they you know, used to meet in the pub in Horsham, not, not surprisingly, um, that it, Mr Belloc would have thought that was perfectly all right because, you know, things do go wrong and uh, it sort of made everybody look a bit uncomfortable for a moment or two. But then it was Belloc sort of calling in life to make people feel slightly uncomfortable. And with that, uh, Nick, if that's all right, I will uh, pull the grip cord. Morton knew Belloc uh, when Belloc was from his late 50s onwards so he knew, he knew him as an older man. This is uh, Morton talking about travelling with uh, Hilaire Belloc. When you travelled abroad with Belloc you had not one companion but several. The historian, the poet, the soldier and the man of wide culture who was passionately interested in architecture, in people, in food and drink. And what was he like to behold? To get a picture of him on such occasions one must see a square-shouldered thick-set figure dressed in black broadcloth, black hat, black tie and stiff collar. He carries a very old portmanteau. His pockets are stuffed with papers. He moves rapidly with an aggressive half-run, half-walk, his feet shuffling along the ground. He will be cursing as he goes along, but in the merriest fashion. I rode him out of Wantage and I rode him up the hill. And there I saw the beacon in the morning standing still. In pen and hang pen and cell 
southward and away. High through the Midlands, in the strengthening of the day. Thank my God, all this at the least. I was born in the West and not in the East. And he made me a human instead of a beast, whose hide is covered with hair. <laughs> Sally is gone, that was so kindly. Sally is gone from Hanukkah Hill. And the briar grows ever since then so blindly. And ever since then, the clapper is still and the sweeps have fallen from Hanukkah Mill. Hanukkah Hill is in desolation, ruin atop and a field unploughed, and spirits that call on a fallen nation, spirits that loved her calling aloud, spirits abroad in a windy cloud, spirits that call and no one answers, Hanukkah's down and England's done, wind and thistle for pipe and dancers, and never a ploughman under the sun. Never a ploughman, never a one.